Hello friends, welcome to Engineering Panda family. In this video, I will discuss about classifications of signal. Based on this video, there can be many questions based on theory as well as examples. This topic is essential for university examination as well as for competitive examination. So I request you to see this video till last. See, signal can be classified in many different ways. It can be classified as per continuous time and discrete time signals. It can be classified as per analog and digital signals. Signals can be classified as per deterministic and random signals. Signals can be classified as per even and odd signals. It can be classified as per periodic and aperiodic signal as well as it can be classified as per energy and power signals. So let us start this video with first classification that is based on continuous time and discrete time signals. In continuous time signal, we have continuous amplitude and time. So with continuous time signal, we have continuous amplitude and time. You can observe here one signal is varying continuously with respect to time. So here amplitude is continuous as well as time is continuous, right? While in discrete time signal, we have amplitude at discrete time intervals. You can observe here with horizontal axis, we have time and at discrete time intervals, we have amplitude, right? So this is discrete time signal. With discrete time signal, we have amplitude at discrete time intervals. Now I'll discuss about analog and digital signals. Analog signals are similar to continuous time signals. In analog signals, amplitude will vary continuously and smoothly with respect to time. So analog signals are similar to continuous time signals where amplitude will vary smoothly over a time. If you observe here, we have one example of analog signal that is similar to continuous time signal where amplitude will vary continuously and smoothly with respect to time. If you talk about digital signals, then digital signals are discrete in nature. There can be question in interview that what is the difference in between discrete time signals and digital signals. Then one should know in discrete time signals, we have amplitude at discrete time intervals. But in digital signals, we have amplitude at discrete time intervals and that amplitude will be also discrete in nature. See in discrete time signals, we don't have discrete amplitude. While in digital signals, we have discrete amplitude and discrete time, right? So digital signals are discrete in nature where we have discrete time and discrete amplitude and have binary values for zeros and ones. If you observe the waveform, then here for logic 1, we have higher amplitude and for logic 0, we have lower amplitude. So here we have discrete amplitude. You can observe for logic 1, we have one amplitude level and for logic 0, we have another amplitude level. So digital signals are discrete in nature. Here we have discrete time intervals and discrete amplitude. If you compare analog and digital signals, then nature wise analog signals are continuous in nature and digital signals are discrete in nature and that discrete nature that is there with respect to time and amplitude. To represent analog signals, we need waveforms and functions while digital signals can be represented in binary, hexadecimal and octal systems. If you talk about noise susceptibility, then analog signals are having higher noise susceptibility while digital signals that is having lower noise susceptibility. Why the reason is digital signals that is having only two values of amplitude over here while analog signals that is having variable amplitude and that is continuous with respect to time. That's why analog signal that is having higher noise susceptibility. There can be high frequency noise added with analog signals. If you talk about bandwidth, then analog signals that requires lower bandwidth 
while digital signals that requires higher bandwidth. For example, analog signals that can be speech signal while digital signals that we store inside CD, hard disk, etc. Right. So this is how one can compare analog and digital signals. Now I will discuss about random signals and deterministic signals. Deterministic signals can be defined by mathematical functions. So when you talk about deterministic signals, then it can be defined or predicted using mathematical functions. It can be determined from present and past data. Let me take one example. Here, I'm taking one example of sine signal. So here we have mathematical function that is sine omega t. So one can predict the data at any given interval using mathematical function. So this is deterministic signal. When you talk about random signal, then it exhibits uncertainty and randomness in its behavior because of which one cannot identify mathematical functions for random signals. So when you talk about random signals, then it cannot be defined or predicted using mathematical functions. It exhibits uncertainty and randomness in its behavior. For example, speech signal. With the speech signals, one cannot identify or predict the mathematical function for this signal, right? It exhibits uncertainty and randomness in its behavior. Now, I will explain you even and odd signals. If you flip the signal and as if it is equals to actual signal, then one can say a given signal is even signal. So when you talk about even signal, then here condition is x of n is equals to x of minus n. So as if you flip the signal, then it will become x of minus n. If it is equals to original signal, then one can say given signal is even signal. If you observe here we have cosine signal. So after flip, it will be actual signal only, right? If you talk about odd signal, then condition is x of n is equals to minus of x of minus n. So as if you flip the signal, then it will become negative of actual one. For example, if you have sine omega t signal over here, after flip, it will become minus of sine omega t, right? So if you flip the signal and after flip, if it is actual signal, then you can say it is even signal. And as if you flip the signal and as if it is negative of actual signal, then that will be odd signal. Now, based on even and odd signal, there can be few questions in competitive examination. So you just need to note down few essential points. See first point that is based on summation of two or more even functions. See that is resulting into even function. So if you add two or more even functions, then resultant will be even signal only. If you add two or more odd functions, then resultant will be odd function only. If you do product of two or more even function, then that will be even function only. If you do product of even numbers of odd functions, then that will be even function. So when you do product of even numbers of odd functions, then that is resulting into even function. And as if you do product of odd numbers of odd functions, then that is resulting into odd function. So based on this understanding, there can be question in competitive examination. So you just note down these essential points. Now I'll discuss about how one can identify even and odd components of given signal. So if I say I have a signal that is x of t, that is having two components, even component and odd component. And as if you want to identify even component, then even component of given signal that is x of t plus x of minus t divided by 2 and odd component of given signal that is x of t minus x of minus t divided by 2. And using this equation, I'll be solving examples in future coming videos. Now I will explain you periodic and aperiodic signals. 
फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वन शुड नो वॉट इज पीरियोडिक सिग्नल सी एज इफ सिग्नल इज रिपीटेड आफ्टर फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन देन वन कैन से गिवन सिग्नल इज पीरियोडिक सिग्नल सो फॉर पीरियोडिक सिग्नल वन शुड नो सिग्नल रिपीट इट सेल्फ आफ्टर फिक्सड पीरियड सो वन कैन से एज इफ सिग्नल इज एक्स ऑफ टी एंड इफ इट इज रिपीटिंग आफ्टर टाइम ड्यूरेशन टी देन दैट इज इक्वल टू एक्स ऑफ टी प्लस कैपिटल टी इफ यू टॉक अबाउट एग्जाम्पल देन क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल इज साइनोसोइडल सिग्नल वेर यू कैन ऑब्जर्व आफ्टर ड्यूरेशन टी सिग्नल इज रिपीटेड ओवर हियर राइट सी ए पीरियोडिक सिग्नल दैट इज नॉट गेटिंग रिपीटेड आफ्टर फाइनाइट ड्यूरेशन राइट सो एक्स ऑफ टी दैट इज नॉट इक्वल्स टू एक्स ऑफ टी प्लस कैपिटल टी लाइक रैंडम सिग्नल दैट इज अ क्लासिक एग्जाम्पल ऑफ ए पीरियोडिक सिग्नल राइट नाउ I'll discuss about energy and power signals. Before I start with explanation of energy and power signal, there is one essential note that you need to note down. See, that is always possible that as if signal is energy signal, then it cannot be a power signal, and as if signal is power signal, then it cannot be a energy signal. But it is always possible that signal can neither be energy signal. nor be a power signal right so signal that can be energy signal or power signal as if it is energy signal then it cannot be a power signal and vice versa but it is possible that signal may not be an energy and power signal right if you talk about energy signal then that is having finite energy and zero power always note down this as if signal is energy signal then energy will be finite and power will be zero and as if signal is power signal then it is having finite power and infinite energy right if you want to calculate energy of signal then that will be integration where limit range is from minus infinite to plus infinite square of the signal right and to identify the power you will have to do integration but here t is going towards infinite 1 by t where limit of integration is there from minus t by 2 plus t by 2 x of t whole square right so using this equations one can identify energy and power in future coming videos i'll be solving examples using these equations here there are few essential key points that you need to note down see as if signal is energy signal then energy will be finite and power will be zero while as if power signal is there with us then power will be finite and energy will be infinite and always remember most of the periodic signals are power signals right so for periodic signals we will be having finite duration that is t that is a periodicity duration right so for periodic signals we will be applying limit t tends to infinite 1 by t where limit is ranging from minus t by 2 to plus t by 2 in some books you may be getting different equations like here equation could be 1 by 2t where limit is ranging from minus t to capital t right so one should know periodic signals are power signals and as if you have power signal then we have finite power with power signal and infinite energy while with energy signal we have finite energy and zero power right so these are the basics that you should take care of i hope you have enjoyed this session still if you have any confusion just place that in comment section i'll be happy to help you thank you so much for watching this video